The scene kicks off with the intelligence unit of the Chicago Police Department District 21 in action. Sergeant Hank Voigt and his team, including Aaron, Jay Halstead, Antonio, Kim Burgess, Atwater, Alwyn Olinsky, and Wilhite, are on a mission against a Colombian drug dealer involved in brutal murders. Adam Ruzek, recruited to the unit from the police academy by Alvin Olinsky, joins them. The unit is after Aders Diaz or Pulpo of the Colombian drug mafia. Detectives Antonio Dawson and Wilhite head inside the suspect's address first, unaware that Pulpo may be inside. Despite attempts to warn Wilhite and Dawson, Wilhite is shot in the neck and later dies from her injuries. Somehow, the team manages to capture Pulpo. But during interrogation, Antonio receives a call from his wife about their son being kidnapped. When Antonio's son Diego's kidnappers demand the release of the drug lord, Pulpo, the intelligence unit uses all its resources to find the boy as Antonio struggles with his emotions. Antonio's CI, Jasmine, gives him a clue about a guy named Ernesto involved in the kidnapping. Using Ernesto, our team tracks a man named Mateo and heads towards the station. Aaron notices Antonio's son Diego with an unknown man inside a bus. A confrontation occurs, and they somehow manage to save Diego. In the next episode, the intelligence unit discovers armor-piercing bullets stolen from Canada in a house, being sold using insulin boxes to hide them, and traces them to several homicides. Meanwhile, Halstead confronts a man named Lonnie years prior, the son, Lonnie Rod Iger, raped and murdered the younger brother of Halstead's high school girlfriend, but was acquitted at trial when his father, Phil, perjured his son's alibi. Voigt's son, Justin, is released from prison. Now it's time to delve into our characters' personal lives. Hank Voigt's son, Justin, causes an accident in which a teenager is paralyzed and gets arrested. As Hank tries to stop an eyewitness about Justin by force, Antonio arrests Hank, later released from prison and reinstated to the police force by internal affairs. Aaron Lindsay, who was a former CI of Hank, is brought to the unit by Hank, and they have a father-daughter-like relationship. Jay Halstead, who is dating Aaron, was a former cop. Then we have Adam Ruzek, Kim Burgess, and Atwater. Sheldon Jean, who is a computer specialist, works as a surveillance expert for the team. During the next episode, Atwater and Burgess get jumped on the street by a chick with a bloody gut. Later, we find out that a drug lord named Collins is using girls to swallow cocaine packed in rubbers to smuggle it, again our unit traces down a serial killer and a rapist who chops off their victim's ears. Internal Affairs Division butts heads with Voight, so they twist Antonio's arm. Down by the Chicago River, police fish out a dead body, belonging to some dude, Frank Fidori, and our team's on the hunt for the perpetrator. Aaron's struggling to rein in Justin as he's back hanging with a criminal named Joe Catalano. One day, Aaron gets a drop-in from Justin with blood on his hand, spinning some tale about a bar fight, but he's actually mixed up in a murder. Voigt connects the dots, figuring out Catalano killed Fidori, and Justin was his wheelman. Hank wants to wrap up the case, but with internal affairs breathing down his neck, Voigt sweating bullets over whether Antonio will flip on him and Justin. But Antonio rejects to IA's offer, remembering Gratishar's dirty past, how she threw Antonio's partner under the bus with a bogus case just to climb the internal affairs division ladder. Meanwhile, Finding Catalano's corpse in the Chicago River gives us a peek into what went down after he used Voigt's kid for his dirty deeds. In the next episode, Voigt and the unit dig into a bloodbath at an underground triad gambling joint in Chinatown, pulled off by some hired guns. Turns out, the dirty cop behind it is Jimmy Sher, Voigt's old partner from the gang unit, now running a vice squad in Chinatown. The unit suspects Sher and his crew are the culprits. They tail him but discover Sher's been deep undercover for 11 years, and someone's trying to frame him. Meanwhile, Halstead and Jean investigate Lonnie and later suspect Lonnie is planning another sick crime. So Halstead threatens father, Phil, and son, Ronnie, again. Unfortunately, a few days later, 
the body of Lonnie is found in La Follette Park, and Halstead becomes the immediate suspect. After learning that Halstead was following Lonnie the night before, Voight and Commander Perry suspend him, stripping him of his badge and firearm. Antonio, refusing to believe that Halstead committed the crime, secretly passes the case files on the murder to him. After reviewing the file, Halstead discovers that Lonnie's murderer was, in fact, his own father, Phil, who had come to the realization that his son was a pedophile. Later, Halstead visits the grave of one of Lonnie's victims to pay his respects. After Phil confesses to killing his own son, Halstead is reinstated to the unit, Aaron begins dating Severide from the fire department. The intelligence unit investigates the bombing of Chicago Medical Hospital. Jean identifies the owner of the bombs as Paul Watts, who is found murdered. After reviewing known associates, Olinsky recognizes one of them from a previous interview. They try to approach him but the man holds Aaron hostage, but she is rescued by firefighters. Voigt and Olinsky discover that the mastermind behind the bombing is Ted Powell, a prominent figure in the anti-government fringe movement seeking revenge on the Chicago police and fire departments for the death of his mother and the arrest of his racist father during a siege at the family farm ten years prior. They find out that Powell planted a bomb hidden in a van near police headquarters. The intelligence unit tracks Powell down, and Voigt threatens to throw him off the roof, only relenting when the bomb is disarmed. As Gustav Munoz continues his series of murders, Commander Perry is displeased by the lack of cooperation between Voigt and violent crimes Lieutenant Bruce Belden. He orders them to bring in Pulpo to help capture Munoz, much to the chagrin of the intelligence unit. Reluctantly complying with Pulpo's demands, the team arranges for Antonio to go undercover as a friend to meet up with Munoz. However, the location turns out to be a ruse, leading to Munoz killing two more Ukrainian mobsters. Realizing they've been manipulated once again by Pulpo, the intelligence unit uncovers his secret family, a girlfriend and a young son. Voigt seizes this opportunity to coerce Pulpo by threatening to arrest his wife and place his son in foster care. Under pressure, Pulpo divulges that Munoz will target a high-level figure at a festival in uptown Chicago, in exchange for a chance to bid farewell to his family before going to prison. Jean is revealed as the reluctant informant working for Stillwell of Internal Affairs against Voigt. Meanwhile, Antonio and Belden bring Pulpo's girlfriend and son for goodbyes, but then Pulpo's wife helps him. Pulpo shoots Antonio, Belden, and two other officers before escaping. The shooting resulted in the death of Lt. Bruce Belden, leaving Antonio severely wounded and in critical condition at the hospital. The manhunt for Pulpo becomes the intelligence unit's top priority. They decide to leverage Pulpo's lawyer, who discloses that Pulpo requires someone capable of producing fake IDs. The lawyer refers them to a former client with experience in creating counterfeit identification for the drug lord and his family. When Pulpo's wife's fake ID is detected at a gas station, the intelligence unit locates her and her son but finds no trace of Pulpo. It becomes apparent that Pulpo used them as a diversion to evade capture. The unit discovers that Pulpo has Russian contacts willing to assist him. They learn that the Russians agreed to smuggle him out of the country inside a shipping container. Pulpo is apprehended, prompting Voigt and Olinsky to head to the docks with intentions to kill him. Halstead, aware of their plans, convinces Voigt and Olinsky to allow Pulpo to face trial. It is revealed that both Jean and Sumner are working as spies for internal affairs against Voigt. Voigt dismisses Sumner and appoints Atwater as her replacement. It is disclosed that Stilwell holds leverage over Jean by threatening him and his father with deportation, exploiting Jean's father's substantial gambling debts to expedite the process. Erin finds herself at a crossroads with Charlie Pugliese, a former date of hers, who holds leverage over her and her best friend. However, it becomes apparent that Pugliese is involved in various criminal activities. Meanwhile, Voigt discovers that Jean has been informing Stilwell and confronts him about it. Jean admits that Stilwell exploited his father's situation to manipulate him, and although Voigt releases him, 
it's evident that Jean still harbors a dangerous grudge. Antonio returns home to discover that Laura has left him, taking their children with her. The next day, Void arrives to meet his internal affairs contact, Stillwell, only to find Stillwell standing beside the lifeless body of Sheldon Jean. And thus concludes the first season of Chicago PD. Thank you for watching.